And we are back. Uh, we were discussing polar coordinates. You remember that a point in polar coordinates is given by the radius and then the angle theta in radians. We can actually convert from polar coordinates to rectangular, and then you're going to see back again. If you remember that the, um, I'm sitting here trying to click stuff. <clears throat> if you remember, we said that the cosine of theta was x over r. You remember that kind of sort of? Better. And sine was y over r. Well, if you notice, all we've done here is solved both of these for my x and y, my rectangular coordinates. So it's pretty easy then to actually change from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates because if I take whatever r is and I multiply it by the cosine of the angle, I get my x value. If I take whatever r is and I multiply it by the sine of whatever the angle is, I get my y. Fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, so if I have an example like this and I want to convert, then I go back and I say, well, we just said that my, my x is r times cosine theta, and my y is r sine theta. Well, if you remember, up top here, this is r, and that's theta. So in other words, this first one would be 6 times the cosine of pi over 6, and then my y would be 6 times the sine of pi over 6, and so I have 6 times, what's the cosine of pi over 6? <laughs> Got it? Yeah, you, you don't remember. You got your unit circle? Where's your unit circle? So is square root of 3 over 2. I can make that a fraction and, of course, cancel. And so this would be 3 square root of 3. And so then I get 6 times the sine of pi over 6. Got that unit circle. 1 half, so this equals 3. So again, if this is xy, xy would equal... 3 square root 3, comma 3. So the rectangular coordinate of the polar coordinate, 6 pi over 6, would be 3 square roots of 3 over, over 3. And 3, and of course you should graph it. So in other words, as we can see, if I graph my polar coordinates, I go pi over 6, I go out a distance of 6, and then I say, well, I can actually say that's the same point in the rectangular coordinate system as 3 square root of 3, comma 3. All right, let's do another one. So let's say I have a negative. Okay, so let's see how this, this affects anything. So again, my x would equal my r times my cosine, and I even have a negative angle, of negative pi over 4, and then my y would equal negative 4 sine of negative pi over 4. Well, if you remember your even and odd properties, do you remember them? This would be positive cosine pi over 4, right, because that's even. The sine, the negative, comes out, and then a negative and a negative is a positive. So this becomes the positive sine of pi over 4. And of course, these are the easy ones, right? Because they're the same, square root of 2 over 2, and square root of 2 over 2. And then finally, just, you know, simplifying things a little bit, I get negative 2 square roots of 2 and 2 square roots of 2. So again, my rectangular coordinates for these polar coordinates would be negative 2 square roots of 2 and 2 square roots of 2. Looking at a picture, that's what it looked like. 
So looking here, I can certainly see that, well, let's first look at how do I graph negative pi over 4. Remember, you go clockwise, so this would be negative 45 degrees. And then because my r is negative, I jump to the other side, jump back, right? And so that would be my polar coordinate, which would make sense now why my y, my y, my x is negative, because you can see I'm in quadrant 2, and then certainly my y value is positive. All right, so next video we will convert the other way. We'll go from rectangle, rectangular back to polar. See you then.